I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Dominican Republic to introduce an address by the head of state. Señor Presidente. Mr. President, it is an honor for me to introduce the statement by the President of the Dominican Republic, Luis Rodolfo Abinardo Corono. He will be participating for the first time in this high-level debate of this General Assembly in a pre-recorded statement. For our President and for the Government of the Dominican Republic, this participation is extremely important because it reaffirms our commitment to the ideals of the United Nations while we commemorate its 75th anniversary. And at the same time, we are facing an unexpected challenge due to COVID-19. We have been part of this organization since its founding. We believe in growing multilateralism to find solutions by promoting peace, improving public uh, health care coverage, defending uh, human rights, sustainable development, and uh, saving the environment. Thank you. Your Excellency Volkan Boskir, President of the 75th General Assembly of the United Nations. Your Excellency Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, Secretary General of the United Nations. Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government. Excellencies, Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Heads of Delegation, Citizens of the World. When the representatives of 51 nations, including mine, signed the Charter of the United Nations in San Francisco on June 26, 1945. The world was still in flames. The horrors unleashed by World War II were still atrocious realities against which the international community conspired so that they would never happen again. As a result of that commitment to peace and dialogue among peoples, this organization was born. Today, I am honored to participate for the first time in the General Assembly on behalf of the Dominican people, and in whose name I congratulate the United Nations on its 75th anniversary. The world of 2020 is far different from that of 1945, and it's different because it's better, and it is so to a large extent, thanks to the United Nations efforts during these three quarters of a century to maintain international peace and security. And it is because it encourages cooperation between peoples to solve global problems and serve peace. And it is because it serves as a meeting point for the nations that share this planet. Without the United Nations, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights would not exist, something inconceivable for us today. Neither would we have organizations like UNICEF, FAO, the World Health Organization, the World Bank, or international criminal courts. Nor would there have been the peacekeeping missions that throughout history have avoided so much suffering. The world of 2020 is better than in 1945, but far from perfect. New challenges and threats bring global problems whose scale requires joint solutions that can only be solved through loyal and effective cooperation among the 193 nations represented in this assembly. 75 years ago, the international community had to take on the colossal challenge of rebuilding after the ravages of war, which in turn brought additional obstacles that required commitment, imagination, and work to overcome. However, it would be reckless to deceive ourselves. History is not linear. At every crossroads, there is always the risk of setbacks that hinder goals achieved towards development, progress, and peace, which are always so hard to reach. Therefore, as leaders and servants of our respective nations, we must know that there is a zero margin for error if we intend to face the challenges of our time in our own way and alone. If in the 75 years of the UN's existence, 
multilateralism and international cooperation have been valuable tools, now they are essential, and it is imperative that everyone do their part. That this meeting of the General Assembly has to be held by video conference is already the best example of the main problem we, as leaders and servants of our respective peoples, must face. COVID-19 has put the entire planet in check, joining other threats such as climate change, which affect all of us, but it is extremely serious in island countries like the Dominican Republic. I'm not exaggerating if I say that both dangers could bring other conflicts into the equation, which will, as usual, viciously prey upon the most vulnerable. As a non-permanent member of the Security Council, the Dominican Republic has made a special contribution to the agenda of the protection of civilians in conflict in the context of COVID-19 through a presidential declaration that had the unanimous agreement of the Council. That is the spirit that should prevail in the immediate future when it comes to carrying out the policies allowing us to stop the pandemic first and extend treatment and vaccines later. And in the meantime, the task will be rebuilding everything the pandemic has damaged. In the Dominican Republic, the pandemic has hit us particularly hard because we have had a precarious social protection system with per capita social spending of 604 US dollars compared to the regional average of 941. While the paradox exists that we are one of the nations with the highest economic growth in the region, it is not managed so far to close the equity gap. We all know here that that equity gap will only be fixed by investing in health and education. This is why my government is launching the most ambitious public health program in our history to achieve universal health care coverage by the end of the year as we increase public investment in our national health care system. Along with this, there is a plan to promote quality education that, among other measures, will provide students and teachers with electronic devices so that COVID-19 does not disturb at all their educational process. The future does not wait, and our students cannot miss a single minute of their learning. And this is why our young people are one of our top priorities. We will work to ensure they get the best possible education. In this sense, I believe there is no better education than a comprehensive one, one that encourages students' participation in all areas affecting them. Proof of this is the acceptance of the Dominican French initiative to promote Resolution 2535 adopted unanimously by the Security Council in July 2020 to strengthen the Member States' commitment to the global agenda of youth, peace and security and that directly involves young people in these plans. However, to speak about peace and security without speaking about development is simply a waste of time. Before the pandemic, this organization was already in a reform process to assist member states in achieving the sustainable development goals of the 2030 Agenda. It is evident that achieving these objectives requires an accelerated implementation with the purposeful commitment of the developed countries. However, five years after the adoption of the 2030 Agenda, the majority of developing countries are lagging behind, and those middle-income nations, such as the Dominican Republic, face particular challenges, because although their economies are advancing, institutional weaknesses prevail that lead to inequality. It is therefore essential to modify that agenda so that it responds to the reality and problems facing each country. Seventy-five years ago, this organization was born with the purpose of banishing forever from the international community's vocabulary the we versus you, or them, to assume the everyone. And that is what COVID-19 does in putting us to the test. But I predict it will fail. If this assembly assumes the threat will be annulled through policies, 
not combining the legitimate national interests of each country with the global solutions adopted by the entire international community. To do this, we must act in three areas, health, education, and technology. In the field of health, this meeting should help create the conditions of universal access to the vaccine against COVID-19 as soon as that is available. We therefore demand that this vaccine be accessible to all human beings on the planet. The reason for the creation of this organization is to measure up to historical challenges such as this one. To achieve this, the role of the World Health Organization is essential as well as the creation of a global solidarity fund that will serve as a reserve to mitigate the ravages of future pandemics. In the field of schooling, we must share the most positive experiences, including online education, skills training, and support investment efforts in educational policies. Finally, the UN must be the engine and guide so that the 21st century is truly the century of knowledge, thanks to ever-advancing communication technologies. And hence, ending the digital divide is one of the urgent priorities for the international community. However, any development and any progress will be useless if the values enshrined by this organization in its Universal Declaration of Human Rights are not taken into account. In defending these rights, the United Nations knows that it has the solid commitment of the Dominican Republic to advance towards higher levels of human dignity that promote policies to guarantee equality between men and women and protect children affected by armed conflicts or at risk of being sold as slaves, prostituted or used for pornography. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to this meeting the mandate of the Dominican people to proclaim our nation's commitment to protecting the environment and to continue supporting the Paris Agreements. Further, I believe the time has come to enhance its postulates. In the Security Council, we have advocated that security factors within the climate change context be more broadly and studied in greater depth because a natural phenomenon can cause or aggravate any conflict, mainly in highly fragile areas. The occurrence of natural phenomena and extreme weather events are becoming more frequent, and their greater intensity particularly affects small island developing states. This forces this organization to continue on the path of not considering such phenomena as isolated events, but as common and recurrent realities for which we must be prepared. The lists of threats and complications facing mankind could frighten anyone. However, this organization has demonstrated over three quarters of a century that through dialogue and cooperation, any goal can be reached, no matter how difficult or remote it may seem. Whoever thinks one can change the world by oneself is wrong. And whoever does not know how to measure one's strength to adjust our contribution will also be wrong. And therefore, on behalf of Dominican men and women, I share our deep commitment, purpose, and our work to provide solutions to the best of our ability. Close to 11 million Dominicans are eager to do their part. The Dominican Republic was in the founding hour of this organization and since then has demonstrated its will and commitment in the concert of nations for the sake of peace, prosperity, equity and global diversity. We are aware of our demographic and economic reality, but our condition will never be an excuse for not contributing the best of ourselves as we have tried to do for 75 years. The UN, as I understand it, is not concerned with diplomacy, but with the future. And as Eleanor Roosevelt said on the day of the solemn proclamation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of your dreams. Therefore, let us attain a world of peace, a world of diversity, prosperity, a sustainable world for at least 75 more years. Thank you very much.
On behalf of the General Assembly, <clears throat> I wish to thank the President of the Dominican Republic for the statement just made. I now give the floor 